Hey guys, today we are going to program another UI component for the dialog together. The component we are going to implement is this one, the option box that lets you select between different options and drive dialog forward in that way. However, we are not going to be talking about uh, a dialog system, we're just going to talk about that single UI element and then in the next video let's implement some nice branching dialog. I have another practice here that doesn't have the the option box, so let's let's implement it here. First of all, the option box is an extension of the table in Scene2D UI. So this will count as a widget, just as all the other widgets. This is gonna take a skin and we just pass the skin to the superclass. Great! Now, in order to control this, I want to have some options or some methods that I can call. Uh, first of all, we are going to need a method to add an option to the option box. And the option here is going to be uh, depending on a string, because really an option is just a uh, some text denoting what option it is. <clears throat> then I want to uh, I want to move the cursor on on the dialog so let's make it move up and move down. And then I want to know what the user selected. So I'm gonna make an integer here called get maybe get selected. It's gonna be an integer because we are not going to be referring to the options with their with their string representation. We're just going to use the index as if the options are in a huge array here. Oh finally we are going to want a method to reset the dialog so that we can add new options. So maybe we should call this clear choices. Great. Now since we're going to be treating each option as a, or we're going to treat the options uh, like an array by pointing to a, to different indexes on the table here, let's keep track of what index is currently the selected index. And when we start off, it's just going to be zero. That's fine. Great, great. So here's how it's going to work. Um, we have a dialog here. Whoops. There we go. And then we have some text, and the user can specify what option they want by pointing the arrow towards the the option they want. Right. Great, so now the 0th index is selected. Uh, however, there's still going to be arrows uh, in front of all the options. These green arrows, however, are just going to be invisible. So we make the selectors visible depending on what the user uh, is currently selected. So if the option, if, if the option here is selected, then uh, this arrow would be visible and the other two would be invisible. So that's, that's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to maintain our our layout and it's going to be nice for the user too. They're not going to notice a thing. We can implement this get selected method really easily because now we have the selected index. Um, for all the arrows I want to create a list and since the arrow I'm going to use is uh, not a uh, a character, it is an image, I need a list of images and these are going to be the arrows and then the actual options here, the text. When we initialize the option box here, I want to use a different background. I have a background in the skin called option box that I want to use, a 9 patch so that it scales really nicely. Also I want a table uh, UI container that is going to contain all the elements. This is so that we can get a nice pad between 
the options and the arrows and this option box. This could probably have been done in another way, but I I enjoy this way of doing it. Great, so when we add an option, uh, we need to create a new label uh, with the text on it that the user specified up here in the parameter. New label with the option. And for the skin, we're just gonna get the skin that we specified for the entire option box. Now we put the label with the text inside of this list here. Oh, this list with all the options. And the reason we're keeping track of these are so we don't get the, the reference lost, so we can delete these later and reuse the option box. Uh, we need a an arrow for this option as well. So this can be the arrow. I have a, an, an arrow picture inside of the skin. You can see it here, or maybe in here. That's the, the arrow we're gonna use. And this arrow is also gonna be added to its list. Now we need to add these two to the UI container that is containing all of our actors on the option box. So we're going to go UI container and add a new child, the arrow here. We want to expand and we want to align to the left. Great. Now we also need to add our, our label. And we do the same thing here. We expand and we align left. Oop, that's a weird A. Eh? There we go. Also, we should probably add some space to these so that they don't get crammed up when there's more than one dialogue. Maybe a five here will be sufficient in space. The space is just uh, how much room it needs uh, between elements, but if two elements next to each other have the same space, they're not gonna get double the space as if when you do it with, uh, with padding, for example. If two objects next to each other both pad 10, then the actual space you're going to get is 20, but with space, uh, it takes into account what what space the the neighboring elements need too. Uh, now this uh, UI container lays out element from uh, left to right, and that's why we added the arrow first and then the option label. And now we're going to create a new row so that when I add the next option. It is going to appear on its own row. Oh, finally, we should make this arrow invisible. There we go, and then we should uh, calculate whether or not, uh, or what arrow actually should be should be visible so let's add a method for that we can call it calculate arrow visibility yeah whatever it's just a private method it doesn't really matter too much I'm just gonna go calc arrow visibility maybe I should have made something easier to spell here. Great, so this is just going to go through all of the arrows and make sure that only the selected uh, index gets a visible arrow. And the way we're going to do that is just we are going to 
go through for each of the the arrows here. If the index we are on is the same as the selected index here, we're going to get the arrow in that index and set it visible. If, however, it is not, we are going to do the same thing and set it false. Great. Uh, we should also do this whenever we move our cursor so that is also always the the correct arrow that is visible great now when we move up we simply get the selected index and we're gonna subtract one I'm gonna go ahead and assume that move up means uh, upwards on on the screen however I want the first index index 0 to be the topmost so going up would actually decrease the index and that's why we're doing that here now we need to handle a special case if the selected index is uh, smaller than 0 smaller than smaller than then the selected index would simply be zero so we don't get below gonna do the same thing down here for move down except we're gonna plus and we're gonna say it cannot be any bigger actually it cannot be equal to either the uh, size of the options array here uh, because the first option in this list is going to have the index zero, so it cannot it can be at most equal to option size minus one. So if it at any point gets larger or equal to the amount of options, then we need to set it back to our limit. It's going to be size minus one here because of that. Finally, we just need the clear choices here. Uh, this is going to be the, the UI container. Whoa. We can simply clear uh, children. So remove all of the elements, uh, all of the actors from the UI container. And also our arrows list here, we're going to clear that. And our options list, we're going to clear that and we are going to get our selector index selected index to zero zero there we go now I think we are ready to see how this does in the game so it's going to our game screen and let's create a new option box here Great, so now down in my initialize UI, I have this uh, dialog table. Uh, it is a, I use it to group together the dialog box and the option box here, but I, I took out the dialog box so this code is a little simpler to look at. So let's, yeah, we can do it down here. Let's make a new option box here. We have the option box variable from just now need a new option box with our skin yes now we can add a few options here let's just go option one option number two 
and option three exclamation point. And then finally we add it to the dialog table. Great, so let's see how that works out. Maybe we should turn debugging off. That looks almost good. We want some more space, I think, between our elements here. So let's go into our option box again. And right here, when I set the space, maybe we want eight space between the labels so the text doesn't cram too much together. That looks much better to me. Great, now there's still no way to uh, to move this arrow so we can create a new controller here really really fast called maybe the option box controller so that we can actually check if our move methods work. The controller here is going to need the option box as a parameter so that it can we can manipulate it. And this controller is going to extend the input adapter in libgdx. There we go. This is pretty much the same as a uh, a listener, an input listener. Uh, so whenever we have a key up, we'll just return false for now on this. Uh, if the key up uh, was the Maybe the I key. And then the K key. We're going to use these keys just for now to control our box here. I is going to move it up. And K is going to move it down. Great, now in our game screen we're just going to make a new controller up here. This is the option box controller. Options controller. And we can initialize it. And we have an option box called option box. Great, now I'm adding it to the multiplexer. The multiplexer is just a stack of these input adapters. It lets you have more than one input adapter and uh, make, uh, and it's, it's possible to make one adapter uh, catch the events so that they don't propagate down through the system. So this is really nice if you have a UI and don't want to click on the on the game beneath the UI as well. So we're going to add the processor here, the options controller. There we go. I think that is going to be it. Now when we start up here, we can the I key doesn't work. The move up doesn't work for some reason. Let's have a look at that. Oh, that's because they're both moved down. Let's change that to move up and let's try again. Great, so now the option box is working. That is awesome. Great, well, thank you for watching my videos, guys. In the next video, we're going to do some awesome dialogue, branching the RPG dialogue, and I'm very excited for that. So, uh, yeah, see you until then.